Hello, in today's video I'll be doing an oil change on this 2018 Honda Accord. I will also be including the oil life reset procedure at the end of the video. Our first step is locating this pinch weld located just behind the front wheel and this will be our lifting point for our jack. And we'll want to position the cup so this pinch weld is centered on it as we begin the lift. You'll also want to make sure that your parking brake is on and your wheels chalked if the vehicle's at an incline. Now once we get it high enough where we have enough space to comfortably work under, you'll want to support it with a jack stand which I'm going to position it under this tow hook section. To access the oil filter, we'll need to remove the small panel held on by three clips, which we'll need a flathead screwdriver to remove. And all we gotta do is rotate on 90 degrees and they'll release or fall like in this case. Then just repeat for the other two. And you'll also want to grab the panel once you're on the last fastener so it doesn't fall. Now for the drain bolt. For this we'll need a 17mm socket and you'll want to make sure that you have your drain pan located under. A little further back than normal since this bolt is bigger than your average and will drain faster. To loosen this bolt we'll want to rotate it counterclockwise and once you break it loose just remove the rest by hand. And as you're loosening just keep pushing the bolt inward this way you control the oil flow and the release of the bolt once you get it past the threads. And as you may notice, not even I expected it to flow that far back. It's almost splashing onto the camera, but it did provide a good angle. Now we can just lay here and let that drain till it becomes a slow drip, or you can wait as long as you prefer. Well to avoid this video being so long, let's skip some of this oil drain process. Now you'll want to make sure that this drain bolt came off with this crush washer. Next you'll want to replace this washer because it deforms every time it gets tightened as it's meant to crush and seal. And it's probably not noticeable on camera, but this washer isn't flat anymore and it's got a lip that sticks up in the middle. Now that it's become a drip, we can go ahead and reinstall the bolt with the new washer in place. Tighten it by hand. Now clean the area with a rag. And finally tighten and or torque it down with the ratchet. Moving on to the oil filter, first you'll want to try and remove it by hand to see if you get lucky and you will need to use a tool. You may want to use a rag to try and get a better grip if your hands or gloves are slippery. If that didn't work, you'll want to use a filter wrench. And I used a new replacement filter to find the correct size filter wrench. But I'll show you how to figure out the right size filter wrench for any filter as soon as I get this one off. With the filter wrench on the ratchet, you'll want to slide it on and rotate it counterclockwise just enough to break it loose. If it slips, you'll want to push it on the tool so it grips better. And we can now remove the tool and loosen it by hand. This way, we avoid the filter wrench getting oil all over it. And you can either loosen it till the oil pours out and let that slow down, or you can remove it without waiting. I prefer to let it drain a bit. Once it slows down, just remove the filter completely. Once you get it off, place the filter face down in the drain pan, wait for the oil pour to slow down and or stop, and wipe the area down with a rag. Now to figure out the correct filter ring size, first you'll want to count these flutes, making sure to have a starting point, which I'll use this label as, and now we can count them. giving us a count of 14 flutes since we started here at this part of the label. Now we'll want to use something to measure the width of the filter, which in my case is a measuring tape, which gives us a width from flat to flat on the filter of 2.5 inches, or 2.5. We can enter that on Google to convert to millimeters, giving us 63.5 millimeters. So we're looking for a 64 millimeter 14 flute filter wrench. 
but the closest I have is a 65 and a 67 millimeter 14 flute filter wrench. It has one size on top of the other. I guess that's why it was slipping a little. A 64 millimeter would have been much better. And here's the oil and the filter I'll be using which is a full synthetic 0W20. Now with the new filter, I'm going to fill it about halfway with oil so it can build oil pressure up a little bit faster. Since it's angled, I don't want to add more than half, if not it may spill as it's being installed. I also want to coat the o-ring with oil to keep it from sticking and getting damaged during install. Now let's give the area one final wipe down before installing a new oil filter. You also want to make sure that the old oil filter's gasket did not stay stuck on here. It can happen. If so, you will want to remove that. We can now install the oil filter and tighten it as tight as we can get it by hand only. To avoid your hand slipping, you may want to use a clean dry rag for a better grip. Now with that tight, we're ready to reinstall the panel. You'll want to slide and align the panel over these three holes and reinstall the clips rotating them 90 degrees to lock them in place. And we can just repeat this for the other two clips. At this point, we can lower the car removing the jack and the jack stand and remove our oil fill cap, which also tells us the oil viscosity we should use on this car. And now put our funnel in place so we can begin to pour the oil in. I'm going to pour in about 3.7 quarts of oil which is supposed to be the capacity and then check the level on the dipstick. But it also depends on how well you drained it, it can affect where 3.7 quarts puts us in regard to the dipstick. With about that much oil in, let's go ahead and check the oil level using the dipstick to see where we're at. We always want to wipe off the level the first time because it may have the old mark. Then we can slide it back in and check it. And for now that's a good level, just below the full mark. Although it will go down once you start it and it fills the oil filter and oil passages. Let's go ahead and reinstall our oil fill cap so we can get ready to start it. With oil in the car and everything on and tight, let's start the car for about a minute while it builds up oil pressure. And now we can shut it off. Then recheck the oil level, wiping off the first mark for any oil splashing around, then reinstall and recheck. And as you may be able to tell, it's burning on the tip, so we should be able to add the remainder since from dot to dot it's about a quart. And we have about a quart and just a little bit extra left in the container. Well, let's remove our oil fill cap, use the funnel, now pour the remainder of the oil, and finally recheck the level. And we're just below the full mark, which is a great spot. Now we can just reinstall the dipstick and put our oil fill cap back on. Now to reset the oil percentage, first we'll want to press the start stop button twice without pressing the brake, which will put us into ignition on car off mode. Next we'll want to press the home button on the steering wheel and now scroll down using the dial just below the home button till you get down to maintenance.
and now click down on the same dial. At this point, you should see the oil life, which in this case is at 30%. And now just click the dial again. Now here you have to scroll through a variety of different maintenance modes to reset. But since we're only focused on the oil change, we want to scroll down till we see the item A only. And now we click the dial one final time, and this will reset the oil life. And as you can see, back to 100%. And that just about does it for this video. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If so, please click that thumbs up button to support my video and my channel. And please subscribe if you haven't done so.